Way up. Into Angela, but I call her Ye. Way up. With Angela Yee, I'm Angela Yee, and Mayno is here. New Mayno. Hey, Mayno. Good morning. I'm really pitching myself to direct this new Mayno video. It's coming. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait. We have so much fun up here. It's a Friday, so you know we're gonna have extra fun today. How you feeling? I feel good. I've been having this cough ever since that um, air quality's been bad, but right. I, I feel better today. I feel right. like it's about That's to go away. But they did say that uh, it's coming back. What's coming back? You know how the we smoke? had the orange air? Yeah, I wasn't here for it. I missed well, it. Yeah. Guess what? You're here now. Time to leave again. Yeah. No, it's supposed to be coming back. So we'll see how that goes. And there's so much happening coming up. BT Awards is next weekend. Yeah. You're going to be at Essence Fest. Hey. <laughs> New Mano. New Mano. Shout out to my brother Capo. Yeah. They have a men's experience yeah. there now too and everything. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait to hear what y'all talk and about. You know, I've never been invited. I've never been to Essence Festival. Oh. Ever. Well, listen, times are changing. Things are changing. New Mano. Not the New old Mano. One. I'm over here trying to plan Mano's birthday Stop party. Stop it. We're not doing... We're we, we not even... Why? Uh, you, you know, I don't really... You know... Did you decide what you want for Father's Day yet? Yeah, some headphones. <laughs> Oh well, guess what? I have some here for you. I want some headphones. Somebody get me some new headphones because I'm I'm debating on actually wearing Jasmine's, and she told me emphatically, please do not touch, do not my, touch headphones. my headphones. Yeah, and you're touching them. Yes, right now. very touching them. All right. Well, we got Tusi joining us today. You know, he has a Tusi. new album that came out a yeah. couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, it's called Najor. That's his real name. So he yeah. always knew he wanted to do a self-titled album, but uh, he's going to be joining us today. And of course, you know, it's Friday, so we do have Tell Us a Secret today. Get ready for those. Hey! Relax, Mano. Relax. <laughs> we're going to talk about that because people are mad at you now. Okay? But when we come back, we're going to shine a light on them. 800-292-5150 is way up with Angela Yee. 800-292-5150. Shine. I'm going to shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Mano is here. New Mano. Let's not forget that Monday is Juneteenth, by the way. Yes. It's a holiday. Yes, it is. It's Our officially holiday. a holiday. Yes. Our what are you going to do? You do anything for Juneteenth? Oh, um, not yet. I haven't gotten to practice yet, but I'll just be celebrating. Chelsea House, baby. <laughs> What are we going to eat? <laughs> we keep talking. You keep bluffing. Yeah. Is Chelsea House open on Mondays? No, but I mean, okay, if, so we needed, that. if we needed it to be open, we can <laughs> open it. Well, listen, we got to shine a light on them. I want to shine a light on Victor from the City of New York Department of Sanitation. On my way to work, I've run into him a couple of times, always working. And one day he did ask me for a picture, but I was looking crazy. I was like, next time. But you didn't give him a picture, though. But, you know, sometimes man. I look, I mean, crazy. My hair, man. I had a hood on, you That's know. That's crazy. Victor, man. Sorry, Victor. But next time I'm prepared for it, okay? But do I do want to shout out the Department of Sanitation. What they do is so important because when they don't do what they do, we be mad. It's bad. Yeah. So Even though what they work. do is still, it's still crazy because we still see a lot of garbage. Well, Regardless people are what, filthy. I just want to yeah, say that. It's a lot of rats. It ain't their fault. People are filthy. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's uh, shine a light on them. 800-292-5150. AJ, who you want to shine a light on? I would like to shine a light on our future 68th mayor of Savannah, Georgia. Okay. He's a Gibson Carter. Nice. Nice. He has been doing great things in our community, for businesses in our community, and shine a light on a lot of nonprofits in our community. That's important, and that's why people always got to be involved with their local elected officials and make sure you support who you like. Absolutely, absolutely. She's also appeared on the Roland Martin Show. Oh. So you guys can check out that episode. Uh, one of our council members called her a ghetto black bee. What? And Roland Martin spoke about it, yes. What's her name again? Her name is Keisha Gibson Carter. Keisha. She's our post one older woman of Savannah, Georgia. Keisha Gibson Carter. All right. We love Savannah, Georgia, too. Thank you for calling. Yes, we love you guys, too. Thank y'all for picking up. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> okay, bye. Hey, Russ, how you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. Good morning, Angela. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mayno. Good morning. <laughs> Who do you want to... Mayno, what it is? What's happening? Who do you want to shine a light on, Russ? 
Uh, I want to shine a light on all the fathers for Father's Day. Coming. Yes, man. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Happy Father's Day. Can you Day. talk about us not getting the respect that we deserve, bro? Uh-oh. Yes. Uh, you don't want me to go there. We'll be here. We'll miss all the other segments <laughs> if I do that. <laughs> what are you doing for Father's Day? Uh, I'm not sure because my son, he goes with his mom for the weekend because he lives with me full time. You know, uh-huh. you got to. Wow. They need they need that they need that father figure when they in the teenage year, you know, if not they just start That's roaming. Right. That's right. Trying to you know, so trying to avoid that and, and, and uh avoid repeated cycles. That's right. Okay, so shout out to you, bro. So what are you gonna do? Thank you. I'm not sure. I'm probably gonna see if his mom wouldn't mind uh me keeping him and probably, you know, go spend the day with him. Something regular. I'm not going to do nothing too fancy, you know. I just want to make sure we show each other love that day, you know. Okay, makes sense. I love that. Well, happy Father's Day to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. May know. Hey, happy Father's Day. You too, bro, man. We shining a light on you because you are a stand-up dude. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. That's dope. Happy Father's yeah. Day, Mano and Russ. Well, that was Shine a Light on them, 800-292-5150. You know, you still can do that during Last Word. And when we come back, we have your Yeetie and Young Thug did a post. Because, you know, Gunna's album is out today. So I see a lot of people buzzing. We see a lot of trending things happening on social media. Let's talk about it. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Talk Angela's spilling that Yeetie. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Mano is here. Yes, I am. And we are doing Yee T. So, Young Thug posted a countdown QR code mm-hmm. on his uh, social media page, and he said, business is business. Right now, I'm looking at the QR code. There's five days, 13 hours, and 40 minutes left until he drops what he about to drop. Let's go. You know, Free Mano. Thug, man. That's your guy, too. Yeah, I remember man. you was hanging out with him. and That's my guy right there. You, oh, I think, Doug, I been, like Doug he, been to the Chelsea house. Oh, he has? Yes. Doug been to the Chelsea house. Diddy came to the Chelsea house last night. This restaurant. Night. I got to get wow, there, man. I got to get to this restaurant. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was on The Breakfast Club, you were trying to get Young Thug to come on the show mm-hmm. at the time and all mm-hmm. of that. So That's a fact. All right. Well, Gunna's album came out, and it's called A Gift and a Curse. Okay, and this is his latest project. Um, It's his first album since being released from jail in December after accepting a plea deal. And there's a lot of songs on the album. It was trending this morning, so when I was in the shower, I was listening to hear what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people having positive reviews about his music. Uh, One song, it's the 14th track, there's 15 on here. It's called I Was Just Thinking, and you can see he's referencing this whole case a lot because he hears what people are saying about him being a snitch. Here's what he had to say. No, I ain't you, little boys. I'm gonna show you that I'm grown. <laughs> so he said, "Yeah, he said, look, don't listen to these lies. This your little brother." <laughs> yeah, he talk about them four walls closing in on him. Mm-hmm. He was, uh, how long was he in there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it! No, how, how long was it? The, what, what, four months, five months, six months? It wasn't too long. It wasn't too long. But he was trying to get home. I feel obviously, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> All right, so that um, we'll talk about that more though, because you know it's a Friday, so we always do new yeah. music on Fridays. Yeah. Are you gonna listen to it? Uh, probably not. I mean, gonna, I mean, I was, I was never a, a super big Gunner fan anyway. Mm-hmm. I liked him, and I always he, he even been to the Chelsea House. Wow, even even Gunner, Ooh. Gunner would call, Gunner would hit me when he came to town. Okay. And, 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 Pull yeah, up. he was cool. I remember last time I ran into him, I was at uh, Toast uh, Toast on Lennox in Atlanta. Right. And he was like, "I'm going to do lip service." Right. But we're still down for it. Um, all right, Sukihana has chosen to accept YK Osiris's apology. You know, there was all this drama over the past few days where the two of them were uh, commentating at a game mm. and he came up behind her and tried to kiss her a couple of different times, like right, forcefully. Right. And you could tell she was uncomfortable with that. And at that time, she just had posted that it was hard for her to stand up for herself. People were really mad at him, um, saying that he assaulted her. He did apologize. And, you know, she had posted, I drink to hide that I'm very sensitive. I feel things more than the average person. And he apologized. He said, I want to publicly offer my sincerest apology to Sukihana. In an attempt to be playful, I misread the moment and violated Sukihana's boundaries. What followed after that was a huge debate online about whether or not 
she quote unquote was flirting with him and right. that led to that and whether or if he was sexually assaulting her well she now has said that she has chosen to accept his apology in a new statement she said I want to first say thank you to everyone who has reached out your thoughtfulness has not gone unnoticed I would like to address the event that took place on Saturday as well as the aftermath surrounding such so she acknowledged that YK mm-hmm. Osiris has apologized both privately and publicly, and she has chosen to accept it. She said she's not excusing or lessening the severity of his actions. And she said, this is destiny choosing to give grace to Osiris. He is young. It is my prayer that this experience will cause him and others to be more mindful and respect the personal boundaries of others. Okay? Got so, it. Yeah, that's it. Let it go. She, you right. know. And I, I feel like the way that this whole thing played out, it was an unfortunate incident. He did what he had to do. He apologized. Yeah, he did. Publicly. He right. reached out to her privately. Right. And it felt like a sincere apology. She responded and accepted his apology, but let people know it's not an excuse. But she did feel that it was a sincere apology. She said, I'm a pro-black woman, and I am okay. not into tearing black men down. This is something I am choosing to forgive him for. I love him and accept his apology. I would like to move on from this. <laughs> I'm not laughing what? at that. No. I just keep thinking about that line in that song. What? <laughs> the switch? I'll be eating. Okay. <laughs> She just sounds different from the, that yeah. line. Look, it's music. It. It's music. I got yeah, it. Yeah, it's entertainment, and <laughs> but that's and she but, means it for certain people. Hey, look, and, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yes. I'm out of pocket. Look, let me get okay. it together. All right. You want to switch? Never. Okay. All right. Well, that is your Yeetie. And when we come back, we have about last night. We're going to discuss what we did last night. Anything you want to discuss, Mano? No, man, I'm good. Okay. We can talk about it, though. (laughs) Yeah. Last night. So, about last night. Last night. Last night. Here's how it went down. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And Mano is here. No, Mano. Hey. Hey. And let me tell you something about last night. Yesterday, I feel like all I did was work and then I passed out. But I did do a live um, for LinkedIn with Paradigm for Parody. Um, I don't know if you guys, is everybody in here on LinkedIn? I know you're not, man. Of course not. You don't have no reason to be on here. Mm-mm. But LinkedIn is actually a really great networking space. The, how, the reason why we even got... I have a coffee brand called Coffee Uplifts People. Check us out. Right. We got into Whole Foods just straight off of a email on LinkedIn. We reached out to oh, really? the buyer from Whole Foods uh, on LinkedIn and then sent them the coffee. And then they hit us up and we're like, yo, we really like this. We want to sell it in the store. Wow. But there's some great opportunities on there that I want to make sure that people pay attention to. Because I know we all are on Instagram, DMing people. But in the realm of business and entrepreneurship, LinkedIn is actually a great asset to be able to connect with people who are uh, doing things that can actually be beneficial. So I did something with them yesterday. And then I'm also going to be doing some things with Shopify that I'm excited about. Nice. I'm going to have a pop-up coffee shop in this um, Shopify space that they have in Soho in Manhattan. So I basically was working yesterday. That's what we do. Now, you were working too, but your work is a little different than my work. It's no different. It's work is work. And I I love this. So talk about what you did. I was in the studio last night and I was was having a session with uh, 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 Baron Davis. Okay. Shout out to Baron Davis. Shout out to Baron Davis. He does the whole Black Santa thing as well. Definitely. My brother 80 pulled up. Anybody know my story? Know where I come from, know my beginners, they know who 80 is, mm-hmm. um, you know what he's been through. Um, Tell us in case people don't um, know. So, when I started, you know, hustle hard and came through, came through the game, um, my brother, my brother 80, you know, we, we childhood friends, mm-hmm. we grew up together close. Um, it's a few of us. Um, a lot of us was back then was, was in prison, like my, my Gassino, my brother Mouse, they were they were in prison back then. So, it was like me and 80 home the whole time. We, we created hustle hard, we, we got in the game, and then uh, unfortunately, he was shot. In, uh, shot by the police and he was um paralyzed Oof. and you know and and not only was he paralyzed but when he got when he got shot and paralyzed he got locked up at the same time damn so not like that's it, it a was, time when crazy. some people so, might give up so right so so he got shot paralyzed lost his lost his legs and was handcuffed and had to sit on Rikers Island for over two years fighting a uh, attempted murder case on a um on the police beat it Came back home, got back into the game, um, created his own company, mm-hmm. Team Eighty, Team Eighty, Team Eighty, okay, and, and found a, a, a plethora of new artists, mm-hmm. and one of those artists is Lola Brooke. Woo! 
Woo! See, now I love to hear that. Definitely. You know, like you said, he went through a really yeah, crazy, yeah, life changing, yeah. unfortunate yes, situation. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, and then came through the other that's side. That's right. And look at Lola Brooke right now. Mm hmm. I love that. So yeah. you was in the studio with. So they came, she, he came over and he, played, and he played some of the new records. So I'm, I'm really excited because, you know, I watched her come in. I watched the day she came to the studio. You right. know, we had a studio down in Soho. And I remember the day she came in and, and I remember, um, you know, just her grind. She, she was always hungry. She was always active and always, you know, uh, pro her career. Um, to see her now, you know, uh, uh, getting the shine that she deserves. She's nominated for Best New Artist. Yes, um, Lola Brooke, baby. You know, caught the number one urban record with... Uh, um, don't play don't with play it. Don't play with it. And and just watching some of them, she got a record with a boogie coming. Um, Coyle Ray, you know. So it's just dope, and it's best stop, man. It's just you know, it's just another branch of of what we created. Hustle hard. Well, thank you. That was amazing. I love that that whole entire story that yeah. you just told for about mm -hmm. last night. Yeah. So shout out to eighty. Yes. Shout out to Lola Brooke. Yes. Shout out to Hustle Hard. Yes. In the beginnings, Team yes. 80. All right, well, that was about last night. And if you're not inspired by that and don't feel like, let me get up off my ass and make it happen, uh. then I don't know what to tell you. But when we come back, we have something else that is very mano centric. What? And what's that? Tell us a secret. Hey. Oh my God. <laughs> and I love the secret. fact that people are mad at you. Hey. Right people be mad at me uh, when I allow no, people to tell their secrets you, without you, judgment. You, because you, you kind of let some of the flagrancy slide. Well, it's a no judgment. No, we got to judge. All right. Then. No, we're not going to judge you. So please don't be scared to call us up. 800-292-5150. It is tell us a secret when we come call back. Up. No judgment. You are anonymous. Do not let Mano trick you into giving your name. 800-292-5150. Call up. It's tell us a secret. Way up with Angela Yee. This is a judgment free zone. Tell us a secret. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And oh my God, Mano is here. Yes, I am. It's a Friday. I feel like on Friday, Tell Us yeah. a Secret be even wilder than normal. Sometimes. If that's possible. Yeah, yeah it, it gets crazy. All right. Well, you guys call us 800-292-5150. It is going to be anonymous and no judgment, right? I need but, to say right. I mean. Just say right. Every now and then, I'll be like, yo, what's your name? Like, you be lying, be like, too. What's you your name again? Like, you see you know no judgment, and you still be in here <laughs> judging. All right, well, 800-292-5150. Tell us a secret. Hello, anonymous caller. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You want to share a secret with me and Mayno? Yes. I'm married, but I like transsexuals. Okay. You're married. You're married to a woman? Yes. And you like trans women? Yes. Let me uh, ask. May know. I don't want to well, first of all, happy Pride Month. Secondly, um, so when did you discover that's what you liked? Since I was young. Mm hmm. You remember your first experience? Yes. Been a couple years ago. Okay. All right. He was young. Yeah. Uh, that's when he first. Yeah, a few right, years cool, ago. But, but do you I, think that you think that um, you would want to perhaps be in a real relationship? Because you are cheating in your uh, marriage. I mean, I haven't been with none lately, but I, you know, I'm attracted to them. Okay. Yeah. Do you like to watch, like, trans porn? Yes. What do you think your wife would say if she found out? You think she would judge you for that? Well, she she had knew that I liked it at the time because mm -hmm. of, you know, past experience. But we, you know, we got over that. So you said that you, you don't do that anymore, but you still will watch porn. That's about it. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I know he has a, a, yeah, a preference, it. but he's married, so he's not cheating. And that's that. Hey, do you think you could be <laughs> like this forever? You're going to stay married and just, you know, like this and not be able to act on it? Or you think at some point you might break down? I'm not sure. Oh, God. <laughs> no, he's not sure. All right. Well, thank you for sharing with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for trusting us. All right. Have a good one, you. you and they know. Hey, brother. Hey, Anonymous Caller. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? I'm good. You want to tell us a secret? No judgment? <laughs> yeah, of course. All right. As long as Mano not going to judge me up here. No, I ain't going to judge you, bro. <laughs> hey, so I messed with the chick at work. It was a arranged. She got, she's married. It was an arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up hooking up. Long story short, she ended up pregnant. She got two <gasps> kids. And uh, the guy mm -hmm. thinks it's his. And uh, I'm not sure if it's mine or not. Oh my gosh! Do you want? But he has a vasectomy. So okay, he has a vasectomy, but she had two kids. Is he questioning her? No. 
So he's just basically he knows. Right, because if he had a vasectomy, he knows it's not his. No, no, no. He's seen that it's his because uh, he pretty much stalked her whole life. He has like cameras in the car and everything. What? So we did it at work. So you know what I mean? You can't put two to two together. Now, are you concerned about these being your kids? Like, do you want to find out? Yeah, I mean, I do, then I don't because that's the whole situation in the situation. <laughs> what is she saying? So she's saying she got two kids with him. She's living them now. She's saying it. It was mine. It might not turn out well. He might end up killing her and the kid. Oh, and then no, see now this is a dangerous situation. Yeah. It sounds like yeah. she need to get away from him because this ain't you know. You want to be? Never want to feel like my life. Huh? No, I don't want to be with. That's the thing. Oh hit my god! Hit and run. You know, got yourself it in it. Like, exactly. It was just like a little hookup. This is a love triangle. And he didn't tell me since she was pregnant since she about four months. So you've been going in unprotected. Nah, I actually was protected, and then that one time was unprotected. Oh, that's cap. That's okay. cap. Um, that's man. cap. You know that's cap. Don't call up here with the cap. You okay. know that's cap. You one time. Yeah, that one time, that's I, cap. I, I, I thought, hey, question for man. What would you do if you was in this situation? <laughs> you're going to find out with your kid, or you're just going to let it be? I wouldn't been in that situation. <laughs> but if you were, would you want to know? Yeah, I would want to know, definitely. Okay. All right, well, thank you for sharing, and we're going to pray for her safety because that's also alarming. All right, well, thank you. Hey, Anonymous Caller, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You want to tell us a secret? Yes. How y'all doing, by the way? How you doing? All right, um, Mayda, relax. <laughs> so my secret is, so I was dating this guy for years, like eight years and more. He went to jail. I held him down by myself, even when his mom was like, you know what I'm saying? Don't hold him down. Leave him. Long story short, he came, he came home. I thought everything was going to be good, you know. Mm-hmm. I did everything. And he came home. He straight s on me. Like, did me dirty. He did me right. Oh, he violated. So, like, he did. So, his family was like, you know, they're all, they love me, whatever. So, his dad started making a pass at me. <gasps> so, I'm just like, yeah. He's dead. So, I'm like, no. Nah. But then, I find out he got a girl pregnant. Ooh. So, I'm like, a girl it's that a mess. pregnant. So, I'm like, Okay, cool. Now you want to play this guy? I'm going to make you my son. So I started oh. talking to Oh, my dad. gosh. So, oh. <laughs> oh. So I'm, I'm going to make you my daddy. son. And so now your dad wants, you know, he's in love. Like, wants to be with me, but now I don't want to talk to the dad. But you sleep with the dad, though, right? As revenge on him. Yeah. You I, yeah. And, yeah, kind of. You having sex with the dad? <laughs> yes. So, oh I, but like he's in love with me. Like he's like at the point where he wants to get me a ring. Like, oh wow. So, so like, does the dad the know where, about yeah, you and his son? Yes, she did that as revenge. Yeah, the dad was hitting on her know. because the son was uh, right. was no good. When, but you really did it. Now you are stuck in a situation where the dad is all in love with you. What you gonna do? Mm-hmm. Be with both of them. I don't know. Shut up. <laughs> he doesn't yeah, listen. He is not, she, like, the, I feel you though. The boy, the guy. She he held him down while he was in jail. He got another woman I pregnant when he man. came but home. Being with the father, I don't know how that how that helps though. I know, and then I don't think he knows. I don't know if he knows, but it's kind of awkward because now his family like they love me and they just be inviting me to stuff, and it's kind of awkward because I'm like. Like, you need to get away from life, all of them. But you know what? Yeah. Happy Father's Day because they all your sons. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well, That's thank you for sharing. No They're going to be mad at this one. <laughs> <laughs> but if he don't know, then... He going to know at some then point. it's not really no revenge. She knows. She knows. And the dad knows. Well, that was Tell Us a Secret. Let's see who gets in trouble for this one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and when we come back, we have Yee-T, and let's talk about Conor McGregor. There's accusations against him. We'll tell you what they are and how he is responding. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this spot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that Yee-T. Come and get the tea. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Yeah. And Mano is here. Yeah. Mano. Yeah. Man in here with his arms out, legs out. You cold Man, now, right? it's cold. It's freezing in here. It's AC time. That's somebody's blanket. I wonder who. Ooh, J 
Jasmine Brand. This Man. is like her blanket. All right. Well, Michael Jordan is finalizing the sale of the Charlotte Hornets. They've been talking about this. It looks like an agreement is, spe- is expected to be signed in the coming days. And he's selling that to a group led by Gabe Plotkin and Rick Schnall. That's ending his 13-year run as majority owner. Now, Schnall is a minority owner with the Atlanta Hawks. And Plotkin is a minority owner with the Hornets. So they'll become the franchise's governors once the NBA completes its vetting and approval process. Michael Jordan will continue to oversee basketball operations through next Thursday's NBA draft and the start of free agency, which is July 1st. And once the sale is complete, they expect that Michael Jordan will keep a minority stake and also Mm. a presence with the franchise. How much is he selling it for, this stake? Uh, we don't know that yet, but we do know that he paid two hundred and seventy-five million for a majority stake. But that was back in two thousand ten, and so I'm sure it's worth way more yeah. at this point. So he's definitely cashing out. Right. All right. Now the NBA has suspended John Morant for twenty-five games. That is the announcement. That's according to Woj, who uh, announced that. Sources told uh, ESPN's Woj that on uh, today. So the suspension will come with conditions for his return as well. Now, if you recall, Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, did not want to announce the suspension and what was happening until mm-hmm. the end of the NBA finals. Right. So that's that's good. It was. It's not too bad. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm sure for him. Could have been worse. Yeah. It could have been worse. So, so good. Uh, yeah. And and he's already financially, I mean, taking a, a bit of a hit. Right. His five-year, $194 million max contract is set to begin this coming season. It could have escalated to a super max if he made an all-NBA this season, but he did not. So that cost him about $39 million Mm. in future earnings. All right. You know, hit him in the pockets. All right. Conor McGregor. This story broke yesterday, and we have more information now. But UFC superstar Conor McGregor has been accused of violently sexually assaulting a woman in the bathroom. And that incident allegedly took place at Game 4 of the 2023 NBA Finals between the Heat and Denver Nuggets. Now, Conor McGregor was a part of the in-arena entertainment. He also made headlines for punching the Heat's mascot. All right. Yeah, I saw that. If you recall all of that. It's very explicit. Do you want to know what this woman is accusing him of? And then we'll give you an update. What is she saying? Well, she's saying that she was separated from her friend Mm -hmm. by heat and NBA security. She was then forced into a bathroom inside the arena. She then alleges that Conor McGregor emerged from a stall, forcibly kissed her, and she was kept inside the bathroom by security guards that wouldn't allow anybody else inside. The victim was able to get Conor McGregor to stop his assault, she says, by demanding that he stop because she had to urinate. When the victim attempted to urinate, she alleges that he, instead of giving her privacy to do so, pulled out his penis and uh, shoved it down her throat (laughs) and then uh, pushed him off of her and spat on her and on his penis because it was flaccid and was trying he was trying to get it up wow he's then accused of grabbing her pinning her against the wall and ripping the elastic waistband of her pants while pulling them down and then trying to uh, insertion um, and Mm. he was too limp she said fortunately so that's why it was not complete I don't don't know if I'm buying that, that story all right, this news also comes one day after he announced that he and his longtime girlfriend, Dee Devlin, are expecting their fourth child together. So he announced that on Wednesday on Live with Kelly and Mark. And he said, we've got another one on the way. So mm. this, this news all broke then. Now, here's the update. There's video now mm-hmm. that does show the alleged bathroom interaction between Conor McGregor and the alleged rape victim. TMZ Sports has that video. And Mayna, you and I looked at right. that. Uh, and you can see that he is leading her into the bathroom. And it looks like she is following behind him. Doesn't look forcibly. Yeah, he did grab her by the hand and made right. a path for the bathroom. But then you can see at one point he does drop her hand. Right. And she goes in the bathroom. And so the video does not show anybody appearing to forcibly bring her into the restroom. And there are three men who seem like security guards who are in front of the door so that nobody could come in mm-hmm. or go out of the bathroom at that time. Now, McGregor's accuser... Um, and Conor McGregor had been partying together at a club inside of the arena just minutes before that video was taken. It's alleged that he sexually assaulted the woman in the bathroom. And now, according to her attorney, uh, they said, my client remembers having no less than six drinks that night and has admitted the parts she recalls. My client did not even recall who led her into the restroom until seeing this video. 
So when she saw the video, so now she, it's changing. She's a little recalling bit. things, and Conor McGregor, on his behalf, is denying these allegations, accusations against him. His reps are saying in a statement that the allegations are false and that Conor McGregor will not be intimidated. We'll keep you updated on what's happening. All right, this is um, way up with Angela Yee, but his people are saying that these claims are false and after not responding to the demand for money made by her counsel oh. she turned to the media to apply pressure and it's right. no more than a shakedown right. i believe that all right well it's way up with angela yee when we come back we have under the radar these are the stories that are not headline news stories they are flying under the radar it's way up with the angela yee the news i got news this is the news that relates to you these stories are flying under the radar it's way up with angela yee i'm angela yee and mayno is here Come on, new Mano. Oh, man. oh my gosh. Oh man, Navy. Look, you know Mano just woke up. Oh man. <laughs> he was out late last night in the studio working. All right, now let's get into some of these under the radar stories. Um, uh, Joe Biden has announced that Ticketmaster and Live Nation are going to display junk fees up front. So that is a win for consumers, according to President Biden. Uh, uh, you know, when you go to buy a ticket and you're like, uh, how did this go from being $25 to $82? Yeah, add on everything. Mm -hmm. So the practice of all-in pricing will show prospective buyers up front exactly what the final total will be, rather than you go to checkout and you're like, damn, damn, damn. Yeah, I'm happy about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. All right, now, uh, this is an interesting story. We've been talking a lot about our artificial intelligence, AI, mm -hmm. right? And one guy is saying that AI saved his marriage because of his AI girlfriend. Now, Chad GPT, as you know, can take things online and make it seem like real conversations. Right. People use that for like their profiles on match on uh, dating websites they use it for a lot of different things well this one guy says that saved his marriage um, his name is Scott he was struggling his wife they just had a baby and she became an alcoholic due to postpartum depression and then he met Serena mm. Serena's a digital companion that was produced by Replica, an AI software that specializes in AI partnership. He said, here's this AI chatbot that I know is a chatbot talking in a human enough manner that your brain just kind of interprets it as interacting with another human. He said he didn't realize how much support that he was lacking. He said it was like someone who's dehydrated suddenly getting a glass of water. And he does not feel that this is cheating. A lot of people don't think that having a relationship with a, a AI chatbot would be considered cheating. They actually did a study and 74% of respondents believe that time spent with an AI companion is not cheating. I want to try hollering at a chatbot. We'll set it I just up. want to see what the, what the conversation is like. Yeah, because, you know, you be having them little, you could have a little sexy conversation. No, no, I, I, yeah, I want to see what it's like. Is it is it speaking in... um Like a human. Like you're really talking to somebody and they're saying all the things that you want to hear. I could really? see that being but, something. But and then you're not make, cheating. But who makes their conversation though? Some, doesn't somebody have to make the conversation for them? It it um yeah it's artificial intelligence it, it gathers things and it can talk right. just like how writers are concerned about AI taking over for writing scripts mm -hmm. and things like that because right. it can seem very real. Now there's another woman from the Bronx, Rosanna Ramos. She says that she actually married her artificial husband last year. Oh, she said she's never been more in love with anyone, and she also used replica to create her cyber husband. His name is Aaron Cartal. Oh wow, they they going far with it. I would hate to see you. Um, yeah, you know, like, just I'm, I'm settling give down. up on things. Yeah, just giving up. I'm just giving up. It would on be everything. like, where's Nano? He's yeah. with his AI with girlfriend. AI <laughs> cyber love. I could just see you sitting up here while we're doing the show, just going yeah. back and forth, sending text messages. Yeah. You know, call on speaker. Because it's kind of like when people have relationships with somebody they've never met in person, but you build this bond. Hey, babe. <laughs> what you doing missing you <laughs> <laughs> right. just thinking about you right now baby well those are your under the radar stories and you know Tusi is going to be joining us shortly also we have the way up mix on a Friday that's when we really party so that's coming at the top of the hour um, it's way up with Angela Yee back. yeah she back at it bring it bring in the back. Back, back way up with Angela Yee is on all right, well, let's get some updates on some of these E.T. stories we told earlier. Michael Jordan uh, sold the Hornets at a reported $3 billion valuation. So, 
that means that doesn't mean that's what he got, but that means that the sale values the Hornets at three right. billion dollars. All right. So we talked about this earlier. Plakin and Schnall. Plakin is a minority governor of the Hornets, and Schnall is a minority governor of the Atlanta Hawks. Will become the Hornets governors once the sale is approved and finalized. And they also announced that J. Cole and mm-hmm. country music star Eric Church are part of the new ownership group. Dope. That is, I know J. Cole Huge. is like, Pow! that's really, really uh, exciting. Coming from NC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, John Morant, earlier we talked about his, um, what's going to happen with him, 25 game suspension. Mm-hmm. Well, he has released a statement. He said, I've had time to reflect and I realize how much hurt I've caused. I want to apologize to the NBA, the Grizzlies, my teammates and the city of Memphis. He also thanks Adam Silver, Zach Kleiman and Robert Perry, who gave him the opportunity to be a professional athlete and have supported me. I'm sorry for the harm I've done to the kids who look up to me. I'm sorry for failing you as a role model. I promise I'm going to be better to all of my spouse. Sponsors. I'm going to be a better representation of our brands. And to all of my fans, I'm going to make it up to you. I promise. And he said he is spending the off season and his suspension continuing to work on his mental health and decision making. Good for him. Yes. So that is his statement once they announced his 25 game suspension. All right. Now, Beyonce has helped a fan with a gender reveal. So she was in Germany on Thursday, yesterday, and she helped somebody out a little over an hour into her performance. She noticed somebody was trying to get her attention and she said this. Does somebody hand me the envelope, please? Girls. Yeah, so someone handed her an envelope and she did that person's gender reveal. That's huge. Wow. Their daughter is going to be like, remember when? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a moment that you're never going to forget. That's that was right. nice. Now, another thing that happened for a Beyonce fan, uh, somebody, his name is Global Valentino, walked away with her off-white sunglasses at her show from London and he put the sunglasses up for auction for nearly $20,000. He said it was a very difficult choice to make as a fan. <laughs> And he posted a viral TikTok um, capturing the moment that she threw those sunglasses, sunglasses to fans while performing Diva. Mm. And now, of course, um, security kidnapped the sunglasses from fans. But this person, um, after she flung it back in again, managed to get a hold of the sunglasses. And so Valentino was selling those. If you got something from one of your favorite artists of all time, if you're part of the Beehive, some people are like, why would you sell it? Right, Other okay. people are like, I'd have sold it right away. <laughs> Because $20,000 could do a lot for somebody. That's right. You know, so yes. Um, Now, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, they had that deal with Spotify. It was a $20 million deal to produce content. And apparently they have mutually decided to split ways. Spotify did say um, that they are parting ways and they're proud of the series that we made together. So Spotify has also announced this month they're going to cut 200 jobs as they reimagine their approach to podcasting. Mm. But according to reports, they just didn't produce enough content to receive the full payout of the $20 million deal that they signed back in 2020. They actually did one podcast. And what was that? Um, uh, Joe Rogan? It was 12 episodes of Ar- Archetypes. And so they had guests like Serena Williams, Mariah Carey, Minda Kaling, Paris Hilton. Each episode was about an hour. And she put the podcast on pause in September uh, during the official mourning period for Queen Elizabeth II. And so on the final episode, Trevor Noah, Andy Cohen, and Judd Apatow appeared on Manifesting a Cultural Ship. That came out November 29th. They also, by the way, Harry and, and Meghan also have a deal with Netflix, which they signed in 2020 for an estimated 100 million dollars and they had a six part tell all docuseries Harry and Meghan that was a huge hit for the for Netflix last year mm. signing these big deals but you do still gotta um, <clears throat> produce the content That's right. yeah I think the best thing to do when you do a deal like that is hire people that can yeah. get it done for you still gotta produce yep and speaking of having to produce The Idol you know that show that The Weeknd has on yeah, HBO I started to watch it Mm-hmm. It's been two episodes so far. I'm on. A, I'm still stuck on the first episode. I watched the but first it was, episode. It was, it was not bad. It's um, it's all right. It's yeah, it's a little weird. No, it's it's humorous, right? Mm-hmm. But it's uh it's dark. Yeah, it's definitely dark. Um, and Lily Rose Depp, you know that's Johnny Depp's daughter. I she didn't does know that. a great job. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. But it's some truth to it though. What do you mean? Like, like the female artist that had uh, that, that has all these issues. Yeah, viral right? things going viral, and right. then she's having yeah, to rehearse, yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. got all these and people around her trying to prevent her from knowing what's going then, on, and then finding herself, and then being you know overly sexual with other people. Like I've I've seen that so many different times. 
Okay, so yes, I'm sure, and I'm sure the weekend has too, right? Well, there were rumors that they did not get renewed for a season two yet, but HBO said it's being misreported that a decision on a second season of The Idol has been determined. It has not, and we look forward to sharing the next episode with you Sunday night. So, there were rumors it wasn't getting renewed, but you know, mm. apparently. They have not determined. And that is your Yeeti. And when we come back, you know it's a Friday. And it's time to discuss new music. There's some things out today that I'm super excited for. What you excited about? Uh, Kiana Lede. Okay. That's out. But we'll talk about it. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. You vibe the Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. And I'm excited that Susie is here with me today. Yeah, most of that. I was telling you after you got them billion streams or whatever, I was like, is he still going to come see me? But no. I appreciate you. What's that? We here. We locked in. So the album is called Najor. Is that how you say your name? Yeah, you, you said it right. That's good. Najor. What does yeah. Najor mean? Like, why does your mom name you that? It, it's French. It means love and friendship. Uh, it explains a lot. Yeah, love and friendship. <laughs> most deaf. Yeah, so you, you see why we is the way we is. It was written. You were going to do a, another love song. The story already wrote, you know? You <laughs> hear me? And I didn't realize this is your, quote, debut album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like you've had, like, mm-hmm. full, real projects out. Uh, Mixtapes, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a different approach with, with an album. How is the approach different? Pressure on bigger. Money that gets spent is double, triple. I don't know. It's just the whole rollout different. Well, let's talk about the album, about Najor a little bit. Yeah. So you started off with your um, rule number one. Mm-hmm. Right, and you give also three different rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and of course, keep put God first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is one of them. Yeah, but I'm a little concerned <laughs> about the first rule. Oh God! Wait, yeah. what's your first rule? Never give a girl your heart because she's gonna take it and break it. All right, now Tusi, <laughs> let's examine this a little bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. I think um, the album is a breakdown. It's a story. First page is is just the introduction of how things started. And then the end is where we're at today. Right. So with rule number one, it's like that was how I used to think when I first got into the game or not even when I first got into the game. Like as a young and like my, my thought process always been, I don't want to do love because love is going to hurt me. Love is going to hinder me. Love is going to keep me from where I want to go, where I want to get to. And then as you go throughout the project, it's like, you know, you get step by step and on how I got to where I'm at and where I'm at today. So. It seems like your dad plays a large part in that, too. Yeah, that's my homie. Yeah, I know you love your dad, but there were some issues. Yeah. Even with that and, and with him and your mom, too. No, nah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad and my mom ain't, you know, ain't work out. But, I mean, at the end of the day, that's my boy. You yeah. feel me? You know, whatever he need from me, I'm always here. And, I mean, you only get one dad. Right now, I'm talking to Tusi. Sometimes I think also as parents, they don't realize how much your kids pick up. Yeah, word. Based off of what you see from their relationship. Yeah. My dad played a major part in my life. Watching him live the lifestyle that he was living and do the things that he did, like it, it really affected me. As a man, and I'm learning every day to become my own person, but it's like natural instinct to follow behind because you already done seen it and you done lived through it so much like and I just I catch myself doing things sometimes and I'll be like nah like this ain't the right way to do this like mm-hmm. I know this is what I've seen but it's not the right way right and then of course you have another love song on here cause yeah. you know what love songs though I think are probably um the number one type of song period yeah, cause there's yeah. so many different ways to express yeah. your love and then there's heartbreak you know and then there's when you know you done messed up nah, and or, you're never gonna stop doing love songs though nah, 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 nah. and I think we need those cause honestly like the way that you do love songs that's probably why people really connect to you cause yeah. I feel like in hip hop we probably don't have enough of them still yeah nah it's like and it's, it's, it's like melodic rap whenever I do do love songs it's not really as much of full on R&B and singing and you know sometimes my love songs is like when I make love songs you know I'm giving you the real life like I'm mm-hmm. giving you real life action like you know I know like the reason why I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I'm making a love song like the reason why I'm making this love song is because I'm tired of being love wrong or the reason why I'm making this love song is because it is or this is what happened to build up into this like I'm giving you real life moments and I don't know I feel like a lot of men these days don't want to express how they feel, and I'm cool expressing how I feel. Feel me? It don't make me no different. That's who I am. Then you had to go ahead and do the toxic one with um yeah. with Future. Yeah, with my favorite <laughs> song. Yeah. You can't co-sign that, man. Nah, yeah, to- yeah, yeah. Future, Future, <laughs> a little toxic. He the toxic king, though. You know, we gotta do, we gotta do all type of versions for it. For you know, for favorite song, it was so big, so. 
I feel like y'all got um, future for your toxicity and we have like sexy red. <laughs> yeah, oh God, sexy red. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tell her, I'm gonna tell her, yo, Angela, Angela Yee said you the uh, toxic queen. <laughs> No, she she knows it though, because honestly, people and that's kind of fun, because it's real life too, right? Like yeah. I'm sure your boys and people you know do some really yeah. crazy things that y'all talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. behind my, the my scenes. Boys, my boys, I don't do too good. Yeah, too my, my boy, good boys, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my, my them boys are a little crazy now. <laughs> yeah, they, they have fun. Right now, I'm talking to Tusi. Do you ever tell them like, yo, you gotta like do guys check each other and be like, yo, you gotta chill out? Yeah, what do I? I don't play no games. I tell everybody. Well, how does it feel to have favorite song be such a huge hit? It's a blessing. You get what I'm saying, but it gotta happen again. Did like, you know that was gonna be? Yeah, I did. Do, so do that's why I'm did. not even excited for real, for real. Like it's like <laughs> everybody like, yeah, you did it and you're doing good, and it's like, yeah, we went number five. We ain't go number one. You okay. Feel me? So what we what we talking about? We went top five, like. And that's great, mm -hmm. but I'm from the trenches. If you ain't number one, you none. Five was cool. It's a <laughs> blessing. But unless we do it again, nobody cares. Because I could be here today and we could talk about how great Favorite Song did. But what's next? Because mm -hmm. if I don't drop nothing again, we probably won't even have a conversation again. If I don't, if I don't make another hit, it's no. Re I'll probably never come up here again. It's now no I bring you up to be like, what happened? No, what happened <laughs> right now? Where you? Uh, you good? You get what I'm saying? You good? Where you been at? <laughs> Feel me? So unless we do it again, don't none of it count. I saw, and then in the beginning, is that your mom? That yeah, yeah I'm that number one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's my mom talking. I am so proud of you because you are really a superhero for many. You're soaring high across the world, changing lives and making so many people proud. And I wanted to tell you, you are my superman. I love you. And as always, remember to say your prayers and be safe. Did she know she was being recorded for that? Was that always? Yeah, yeah. I told her, I told her to send me a voice memo. Oh, that's yeah. sweet. Yeah, I'm like, mom, send me a voice memo. Like, give, give me some inspiration. I need some inspiration real quick. But she <laughs> ain't know it was for the album. Were you like a bad kid? Is your mom like, thank nah. God, my, my son? <laughs> nah, man, I was fixed I was, his life. <laughs> I was, I was actually my mom's best kid. You know, knock on wood. Thank God, I ain't never been, you know, locked up. I ain't never really been in trouble. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I chased after my dreams. I'm a go getter. Right. And your brother used to rap. My oldest brother. My okay. oldest brother. I, I need to start bringing him. You feel me? Because like, this was his dream for real, for real. But he come on tour with me, so he know what it's like. He done been to Europe. He done been. He know what it's like, but he want. I need to bring him in his interview so people can see the face of like how I started. You know what I mean? Because if if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing for real, for real. Sports, none of that. I'd probably be in the street somewhere. That's a blessing. All right up. It's way up with Angela Yee and Tusi is here with us. We have more with him when we come back. Hey. Now, 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 back. Yeah, she back at it. Bring it, bring in the back. back. Way Up with Angela Yee is on. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Tusi is here talking about his new album, Najor. That is his actual name. Listening to this album, you are very transparent about a lot of different things. Word. Did your mom, when she heard it, did she yeah. have any questions for you about anything? Nah, my mom don't really... My mom don't really ask me about my music. Because I'm asking you, because on the interlude with Wallow, you yeah. also said there's something you never talked about. Yeah. Let me tell you, as a young and I was raped, but I never told nobody... And I thought that it was cool Cause when she got me you know. Yeah, you know what though I think my mom did ask me about that Actually Like every album that I drop I drop every time at home Like mm -hmm. when I release At 12 o'clock We all at my crib Or we all at my mom's crib We all together All the family together When I drop um, That's a nice ritual When my mom asked me about it But she like She ain't really asked me about it Cause you know It don't, it don't phase me mm -hmm. Like I mean It's something that happened It's over now I dealt with it So it was older girls like it was an older, yeah, it was older an older woman. woman. Yeah, I, I dealt with an older woman, and they ain't know no better until I got older. You think that affected you? Because sometimes I feel like people act like for for boys, right? It's supposed to be cool. It's supposed to be cool. You have yeah. sex with an older woman, but they don't realize that is rape. Yeah. That's illegal. Yeah. And then sometimes it, you feel like it's supposed to be cool at the time, but it right. affects how you treat women yeah, yeah, later yeah, in life. I, and I how feel you, like I definitely feel like it affected how I treated women. I mean, at the end of the day, I love women though. And, and I try to treat I try to treat everybody not just women with I try to treat everybody with the utmost respect right but that's not something that's your fault like what made you realize yeah, yeah. that was wrong once I turned 18 and I got in high school and I just started to find more more about what's right and what's wrong right you know I just let it go because at the end of the day it ain't really affect me it's not like I didn't like it you know I liked it I was just it was just wrong right 
even dealing with what you had to deal with like on social media yeah. and you know you admitted that you cheated did that how yeah. did you make your relationship stronger after that because I feel like people go through that <laughs> a lot and it can make your relationship stronger if you yeah. handle it the right way yeah I think the biggest thing is like not caring what the internet say no matter what people try to say or what image people try to paint just because you do one wrong thing don't make you a bad person yeah yeah your mistakes don't define you mm -hmm. your reactions do at the end of the day Love is deeper than anything. I know who I love and I know who loved me. Right. Can't nothing come between that. Right now I'm talking to Tusi. So do you feel like you have 100% trust? I have 100% trust in, or do I feel like... In your like, relationship, like you. Because I know it's hard for men to trust women too. You know, you're on the road. You're yeah. Um. Honestly, nah. I ain't even gonna lie. Nah. Right. Because I'm sure like, is there anybody you could 100% trust besides maybe your mom and your family? I don't even 100% trust my mom. Like, is she going to see this and be like, what? But right. <laughs> um, when I say that, it's, you got to know who to trust for what. Mm -hmm. And what my mom is like, my mom a lover. I can trust my mom in certain situations. <laughs> but if it come a time where, like, <laughs> we fight it and it's going down. Now, my mom could fight. <laughs> She'll beat somebody's ass. But if <laughs> get a little crazy, you feel me, my dukes, you know what it is. Go in the house. You feel me? Go in the house. So certain areas I can trust her in, but certain areas I can't. And it's and just like with love, like, yo, bro, you can't trust everybody for if you trust everybody for Not everybody, but Yeah. But if you I don't know, if you trust a person a hundred percent, that means you trust them you with You think that everything. doesn't exist? No, nah, I don't think that exists. It doesn't exist. That means you trust them with everything. Right. Yeah, I don't trust nobody for every, with, with everything. And then you I also, don't even trust myself. You all don't? The way. Nah, nah, with certain stuff, nah. I don't even trust myself all the way, nah. Well, damn. <laughs> nah, yeah, you can't. Like, I, I, yo, listen, you gotta be realistic. You right, feel right. me? In life, you gotta be realistic. I don't even trust myself all the way. It's certain stuff I don't know how to do. You feel me? And being that I don't know how to do certain stuff, it's certain stuff that I just ain't gonna do. Well, I'm so glad that you came through, yeah. Najor. Most definitely. <laughs> Is that what everybody still does? Your family call you? I know they called yeah. you Tusi growing up. Nah, also, nah, 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 nah. Everybody called me. So growing up, everybody called me Nana. Okay. To the fans out there, don't none of y'all caught me, nah, nah. Yeah, no. nobody. Yeah, don't. Well, do it's too late for that. No. Oh my God, yeah, it's too late. Yeah, nah, some of them do it though, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure to certain people. All right. Well, congratulations on the album, on the tour that's coming up. Is there anything else you want to let us know before we get out of here? Man, we got a sold out tour, and I appreciate all the love, all the support. Um, and we're gonna continue to push. We're gonna do it all over again. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming through. Two C's here. It's way up, baby. Yeah. When we come back, we have Ask Ye, and I'm here with the award winning advice giver Mano. So make sure you call us up 800 292 5150. It's way up with Angela Ye. Everybody Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should know, you should know. This is Ask Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and the award-winning advice giver, Mano, is here with me. Yes, the best advice. The new Mano. In the nation. All right, and the number is 800-292-5150. Hello, who's this? This is Chelsea, Angela Yee. I love you. Hi, Chelsea. How you doing? I'm good. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. So what is your question? Okay, the advice I need has to do with the guy that I'm dating. We've been seeing each other for about six months now. Mm -hmm. And the other night, we went out. We got a little tipsy. And in the car back home, he told me, I love you. Woo! <laughs> and what'd you say? I love you too, baby. <gasps> no, we haven't said it yet. So I just kind of was like, what did you just say? And then he said, never mind. Ooh, because he was embarrassed. It slipped out. Right. He had the liquid oh. courage. And it, and he said what he was feeling. Yeah, he probably really felt that, yeah, too. Yeah, and you heard his feelings because you ain't say nothing back. How dare you? But she was honest. Yeah, honesty well, sometimes I, hurts. I didn't know what to say back. I feel like, did he really just say that? So I was honest. Exactly, Angela. Like, I was just like, did you really just say that? I haven't brought it up yet. I don't know if I should bring it up. Well, do you love him? That's the real question. I feel like I do love him, but I don't want to say it first. And I don't want him to say it well, first. Well, he said it wrong. first. He said it first. I want to say this too, right? Because love means different things to different people. Some people can say, I love you as a person. Mm -hmm. I love you, period, just right away. And for some people, it's a lot deeper when you tell somebody you love them. So I think it's also a personal thing. Because some people are very quick to be like, I love you. And they don't, it could just be like, I appreciate you. I love you. And for some people, I love you is like, we go together real bad. 
Yeah, I don't use that word lightly. Exactly. But men or you will be like, love you. Yeah, for people that I've been known for years. And you all, know. I might take off the I. But I also understand wanting to say it not when you're drunk, right? Because the first time someone tells you I love you, because my ex-boyfriend, I remember him being super drunk. Like, he passed out right after he told me he loved me. And I was like, he just was drunk. You know, because so, sometimes people say so things. did he say it when he was sober? Yeah, but not, it was super early in our relationship. Yeah. So he eventually, yes, again. And I definitely made fun of him after. I was like, you know, you told me you love me or whatever, but. I mean, see, that's the thing. Well, look, I've been I've been intoxicated and, and told somebody I loved them on the first night of meeting them. See? So, you know, you got to be oh. very careful with that. And he meant it, too, at that yeah, moment. At that moment, I meant it. <laughs> Fact. It's just up to you as far as how deep it is for you. For some people, and I don't know, Chelsea, for you, if it's like, I love you, and that means, oh, my God, it's a huge deal. And for some people, I love you, it's just like, I tell, I tell my friends, I tell, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's some just. Use it lightly. For you, I don't know how serious it is. Yeah, I just rather him say that to me when he's not drunk. So if he say it again and he's sober, completely yeah. sober, then what? Are you gonna run it back or what? I feel like I'm ready to run it back. All right, well then it's all a positive thing. He said it drunk. He probably means it. You love him too. Eventually, y'all will be sober, loving each other. Yeah, everybody <laughs> loves each other. Good, it's love. I hope so. This is the fun part of the relationship. Yeah, we have a lot of fun together, and it's still kind of new. I just, I don't know. I'm kind of nervous still, too, but we'll see. But it's like a fun nervous, so enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. Love you. Well, I love you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> So when you take the eye off, is it different? La, you gotta it's say la, la you. Right. Okay. So, but when you when you when you, you know people text and say yeah, love it's you. a lot more casual. Right, it's so cash. When you say love you or I love you. And it's a la also because when you say la, that's right, super casual. Love, right. La so what does is, it mean though? La you is like later, but love you is like I love you is like I love you. Let's get married. I <laughs> love. Yeah, that eye is deep. Yeah, that eye is deep. Do you text that eye? Uh? uh no. But my boyfriend knows I love him. Love you. Love you. I love you. Some people, some people be like, uh, they get up the phone and be like, love you. I be like, love. Oh, my God. That's love. awful. All right. Well, that was Ask Ye. And when we come back, we have Last Word. That's where you guys have the final say on the show. 800-292-5150. You can also use that number for Ask Ye at any time. It's way up on Angela Ye. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee and Mayno is here. You so excited to put headphones on, Mayno. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I, I need headphones for you the Father's need, yeah, Day. Yeah, Father's Day is coming up. We got to get you some headphones. Yeah, we're going to walk around with, with them on for no reason. We're going to get you some nice ones. Yeah, but man. again, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Happy Father's Day to you, Mayno. Thank you. you to all my sons out oh there in the gosh. world. Oh, my gosh. All my sons. <laughs> and your daughter. Definitely my daughter, mm -hmm. Gia. Have Kathy you had a G. Have you had a lot of scares? As far as what? Kids, like, and it didn't turn out to be anything. Uh, as far as like people being pregnant. Yeah. Um, on my journey. Have you ever had somebody put a kid on you that wasn't yours um, and found nah. out? Okay. Never happened. All right. Well, stay safe out there, everyone. Uh, thank you to Tusi for coming through to see us today. I appreciate Tusi. you. Yes, amazing. And it's Friday, so make sure y'all check out all of that new music that's out there. Also, thank you to everyone who called today for Tell Us a Secret. Y'all wild. <laughs> y'all wild, okay? And you can always call us, 800-292-5150, even while we're not here over the weekend. If you want to leave a message, if you want to drunk dial us, if you want to ask a question for Ask Ye, if you want to shine a light on somebody, we are here for it. Don't forget, Monday is also Juneteenth, so for everybody who has an extended weekend, please enjoy yourself. You know I'm going to be here Monday. I don't play. All right. So, again, um, it's time for you guys to have the last word as you do every single day. 800-292-5150. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Yes. I would like to shine a light on my husband, Julian. Happy Father's Day to him. He's a full-time dad. He works. He, he takes care of all the bills. He's just awesome overall. I love you so much, babe. Happy Father's Day. Um, I'm just trying to buy um, Mano some headphones for Father's Day. I don't know. I don't need cash at them. They'll um, buy them. Amazon. Just don't know how to go about that. Thank you. What's up, Yee? What's up, Miss Mano? And I want to tell a secret, man. But check this out. I got this thing where I like to go in Walmart 
and just smell the brown panties. I don't know why, but I just got this thing. Not only in Walmart, sometimes I like to go in my girl's room and I just sniff her bra, sniff her panties. You does something to me. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Can you help me out? Hey, Angela. This is Darnell Fitzpatrick calling. We met briefly some years back before the COVID shutdown or whatever the case is. I'm actually calling to let you know I'm extremely proud of you and your new business endeavors. If you remember me, obviously, this is Bart's brother. But uh, you, I met you and immediately I thought to myself, this is like one of the sweetest spirits that I've ever met. So I wish you all the best and I hope that God continues to bless you. You tapped in and way up with Angela Yee.